Hey there, Angular folks, it's Brian. A while back, I made a tutorial showing how to hook into Angular's animation start and done events. That video has helped a lot of people, but since then, Angular officially deprecated the animation module. So in this updated tutorial, we're going to take that exact same example and modernize it using pure CSS keyframes, Angular signals, and standard DOM events. By the end, you'll see exactly how you'd write this code today and how to move away from the old API without losing any functionality. Let's jump in. So here's the current app. When we click the continue button without typing in an email, the field wobbles side to side. Fun, right? This behavior comes from the old Angular animation module. So let's take a peek under the hood. Let's open the TypeScript for this sign up form component. Here, we have the wobble animation defined right here in the component's metadata. It uses Angular's old keyframe DSL to create the side-to-side -side movement. We also have a wobble field signal, which is just a Boolean flag to control when the animation should fire. And then we have this on wobble start function. It logs the animation event and adds an invalid CSS class when the animation starts. Right now, we call this function when the wobble animation starts. Let's switch to the HTML to see how this gets called. Here, we have the wobble animation bound on this label. This connects to the animation trigger we just saw. It fires when the wobble signal is true. This signal is toggled when we click this button if the form is invalid. Below this, we've got the wobble done event. This event fires when the animation is done. And when this happens, we are setting the wobble signal back to false. Then we have the wobble start event, which calls the on wobble start function to log the event and set the invalid class. So all of this is what I added in my original video. But now that the animation module is deprecated, let's update this to a modern approach. So what's the plan? Well, we'll keep the same wobble effect, but instead of Angular's animation DSL, we'll use plain CSS keyframes. Then we'll use the wobble signal to toggle the CSS class and native DOM animation events to run our start and end logic. It's simpler, future-proof, more versatile, and easier for new and future devs to understand. Let's hop over to the CSS. Here, let's start by defining a new keyframe animation named Wobble. Then, within this, we'll recreate the Wobble animation. So, at 0%, we're at the starting point. At 10%, we nudge left. At 30%, we move right. Then left again at 50%. Right again at 70% back left at 90%, and finally return to center at 100%. Same sequence as before, but in pure CSS now. Next, let's add a wobble class. Here, we'll use the animation property to add this animation with the same duration as before. So now, we'll need to bind this class when we want this animation to run. To do this, let's switch back to the template. Here, let's swap out the old animation binding with our new wobble class using class binding instead. This way, the class gets applied whenever the signal is true. Let's also remove the old wobble done and wobble start events for now. Let's keep it simple and test just the class toggle first. Now, back over in the TypeScript, we can do a little cleanup. First, we don't need the animation's metadata anymore. So let's remove all of this. And then up at the top, we can delete all of these animation imports. No more trigger, animate, style, or keyframes. Nice and clean. Now let's switch over to the main TypeScript file where our application is bootstrapped. Since we're not using Angular animations at all now, let's remove provide animations async from the provider's array. And then we also need to delete its import. That completely drops the old module from our app. Okay, that's it. Let's save everything and try it out. 
Let's click the button. Perfect, it wobbles. But when we click it again, nothing. The wobble class never gets removed, so it can't reapply. Also notice the red glow we had before is missing too. That's because we're no longer running the invalid class logic from the start event. Let's fix these things. Back over in the HTML, while we can't use the old animation start and done events, we can use native DOM animation events instead. So instead of the old done event, we'll use animation end. When this fires, we can reset the wobble signal so that we'll be able to properly toggle it again when needed. Then instead of the old start event, we can use animation start instead. And here we'll call the on wobble start function again and pass along the event. Now let's switch back to the TypeScript. Here we need to make a few changes to the on wobble start method. For one, it used to take in an Angular animation event, but that's gone now, so we'll just switch to a regular event instead. This means that we can remove that import too. We can remove the event from state check too, since that doesn't exist on DOM events. And instead of the event element, we'll use the event target, which points to the element the animation is running on. We'll pass that to renderer2 to add the invalid class. Okay, that should be everything. Let's save and try again. Okay, now when we click the button, it wobbles and highlights red. Then when we click again, it wobbles again. Nice. Every time we click, the signal resets, the class reapplies, and everything behaves just like before. And that's it. We've officially taken the old Angular animation event demo and brought it into the modern Angular world. If you watched my original tutorial, this is the updated way you'd write it today. I'll link that older video below so you can compare the two side by side. If you're new here, hit like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what other old Angular features you'd like me to revisit and modernize. Maybe we'll wobble our way into another demo together. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.